Welcome back. In the last two sections in Chapter 8, we'll be talking about annuities. All an annuity is is just a sequence of regular payments. Um, so as opposed to compound interest where we were just depositing money once and allowing it to accrue interest, here we'll be making regular payments. So this could be something like every month you deposit money into a savings account to save for your future. Or it could be something like you've borrowed $10,000 and are making regular weekly payments on that debt. All of those things would be considered annuities. Now, if we were in a class in financial mathematics, we'd be doing a lot of discussing here because there are many different kinds of annuities. You can have ordinary annuities where you are making payments at the end of every compounding period. There are annuity due, which involve us making payments at the beginning of every compounding period. And then we have complex annuities where the number of payments doesn't align with the number of compounding periods. So that might be something like um, a credit card where the interest is being compounded daily, but you are only required to make monthly payments. Now, for this course, we're only going to be focusing on ordinary annuities. So there's really a limited number of formulas that we'll be working with in this section. Um, so for these ordinary annuities, again, every compounding period will involve us making a payment, and we'll be making our payments at the end of each compounding period. In 8.3, we're going to talk about future value of an annuity. So in other words, what will be the amount that we'll have in the account in the future after we've made all these payments? This is the, the total amount, including the payments and also the interest that we've accrued. In 8.4, we'll be talking about the present value of an annuity, and um, that would be something like how much does our account need to have now so that we can make these regular payments out of it to last a, a certain term length. For the annuities that we're looking at, these ordinary annuities, the formula that we'll be using is a little bit complicated looking. Uh, but it's actually not too terribly bad. And in fact, there are two things that are the same as when we were talking about compound interest. I and the exponent here, N. I, of course, that's our interest that we get per compounding period, just as it was before, our stated rate divided by number of times we get interest per year. And that N is the number of times that we get our interest payments. It's the number of times per year you get interest multiplied by number of years that you get those interest payments. The other two things here are A and R. R is our rent, the amount that we pay per period. Um, this is sometimes also given with symbols PMT, payment amount. Um, I'm using R just for a little bit less writing. And for the other letter A, A is our future value, that's future amount. I'm using A so that it's the same sort of letter that we used when we were talking about the future value or future amount of a compound interest deposit. Um, some books might use FV instead for future value, but really the future value just is the same thing as we had back in 8.2. It is that future amount that we would have A. And so what we might be interested here might be finding out what is A, what is our future value. So we might want to know if we make payments of a certain size, how much will we have in the account after a, a certain length of time. Or we might be interested in talking about R. If we want to have a particular future value, how much must we make for our payments? How big must our payments be? So for this first problem, we're looking at making regular payments of $100 into an account that's paying 1.35% interest compounded monthly. So here our regular payments are of size $100. We have our stated rate for interest being 0 0.0135. We have that our interest is going to be paid monthly, so 12 times per year. And T, our number of years, is 
35. Uh, that's one thing that's the same here as it was back for compound interest, that T is always measuring time in years. So if you were putting something in the bank for six months, then T would be one half. Okay, so we've got most of what we need. We just need to put things into our formula and start calculating. So the formula was that A is equal to R 1 plus I to the N minus 1 over I. And if I put in my values that I have, so that's 100, 1 plus 0 0.0135 over 12, that's I to the power of I uh, uh, was, of course, R divided by M, so that's the 0 0.0135 divided by 12, and N is M times T, 12 times 35, which turns out to be 420. And then in the denominator, we've got I again, 0 0.0135 over 12. Now, if you enter things in exactly the way that I've written them, so with all the brackets that I've given into your calculator, then you'll be able to do this in one step. So in my calculator, I would enter 100 times left bracket, left bracket, 1 plus 0 0.0135 over 12, right bracket to the power of 420, minus 1, right bracket, divided by left bracket, 0 0.0135 divided by 12, right bracket, and then hit equals. So if we enter things again, just exactly as I have with all the brackets that I've given, then we'll find that it is rounded to two decimal places, 53,650.96. So there will be $53,650.96. So after 35 years of making these $100 monthly deposits, I've put aside $53,650. All right, let's continue on with this next one. Now we've upped the amount that we're paying. It's $3,000, but we're only making them as semi-annual payments. So we have $3,000 that we're going to be paying, but we'll only be doing it two times per year. And we'll be paying this amount for three years, so time will be three and the rate that we have, the stated interest rate, is 3.6%. Um, one thing just to address here before we go any further, uh, again, we're making these payments semi-annually, and the interest is also being compounded semi-annually, and that's on purpose, because if we were making payments at a different rate than the interest is compounded, that would be a complex annuity, and that's not something that we're doing. So if you're wondering, well, what if I made monthly payments and my interest was compounded semi-annually? Um, long story short, you would need a, a different formula than the one that we're working with, because the formula that we're using, this formula that I'm just writing down now, is only applicable to an ordinary annuity, one where you're making your payments at the end of every compounding period, not a complex annuity. Anyhow, we just need to calculate now how much will we have, and so let's see, we've put in $3,000 into an account paying 3.6% interest compounded semi-annually, and here N is m times t, and of course that would be 2 times 3, or 6. We would have 6 deposits that we'd be making in total. And then calculating, and I find that I would have $18,829.70. Now there's a follow-up question here, which is, uh, so first off, how much will you have in the account after three years? We now know 18,829.70, 
the second part of the question was how much of the final balance is the interest that I've earned? And so this is where we just need to remember that, of course, the interest is just your final amount minus your principal, your principal being how much you deposited. And we know how much we deposited. We deposited $3,000 six times. We made deposits of $18,000. So we can figure out then that the remaining amount, the $829.70, that must be the interest. So I have earned... $829.70 in interest. This is kind of a nice one because here we've got two friends and they're doing sort of a, a different retirement plan. They're saving for the future. Um, and Blanche and Dorothy are depositing what will turn out to be the same amount each. So you'll notice here, Dorothy is making deposits of $100 every month and doing that for 20 years. So Dorothy's deposits, she's going to deposit a $100 a month, 12 times per year for 20 years. And so that means that Dorothy is going to be depositing $24,000. And Blanche, sort of the same idea here. She's doing a deposit for less time, but she's depositing more money. So Dorothy was depositing for 20 years, and Blanche is only going to be depositing for 10 years. She'll be doing $200 a month monthly for 10 years. So Blanche's deposits will be $200 12 times per year for 10 years, which also turns out to be 24,000. So both these both of these friends are going to be depositing $24,000 in total. And if you look further, you'll see that Dorothy's interest rate is actually lower than Blanche's interest rate. So it's not quite the same. So we have that Blanche is actually going to be receiving a higher rate of interest, an extra percent. However, Dorothy is going to be getting interest for a longer period of time. So it might be interesting to compare and contrast. How are the two friends, how are their amounts of money going to stack up? So we'll start with Dorothy and then we'll do Blanche's first. And then we'll also be able to compare and contrast how much interest did each earn. And of course, you can compare that easily since they've both wound up depositing the same amount of money, $24,000. So let's first do Dorothy's amount. So if we're doing Dorothy's amount, then we just need to remember that what she has is... As her future value, A, she has her rent, her monthly deposit of $100. The interest was 3% compounded monthly. And she was paying this for 20 years. So the power that we have here, uh, N, would be 12 times 20 or 240. So Dorothy is making 240 deposits. And when I calculated this, I found that Dorothy would have a future value in her account of $32,830.20. So you could say also then that Dorothy has not just this as her future value, but she has as her interest amount the $32,830.20 that she has in her account minus the 24000 that she deposited herself means that what she's earned in interest from the bank, $8,830.20.
And we can do the same thing for Blanche. So her future value is R, $200, that she's depositing per month. Her interest rate was 4% for Blanche, and she's only depositing for 10 years, so 12 times 10, or 120 payments. And we find that Blanche's amount that she'll have after she's done all of her depositing, 29400 uh, sorry, uh, $449.96. So that means that Blanche's interest should be that $29,449.96 that she has in her account minus the 24000 that she deposited herself, which means that in interest she's only earned $5,449.96. So this is kind of an interesting thing to compare, and this is sort of the instructive example here for the future if you're thinking about saving, that the amounts of money that they both deposited, both were the same. They both deposited $24,000 in total. But because Dorothy's was in her account for longer, even though Dorothy had a lower interest rate than Blanche's, Dorothy still ended up with more money in her account compared to Blanche. In fact, Dorothy's amount that she earned in interest was quite a bit more than the amount that Blanche earned in interest, and that's, of course, because Dorothy had her money in the account longer. All right, so we've done a couple of examples of looking for the future value A, and I said we might also be interested in looking for the rent amount, the amount that we must deposit, R. And that would be in a case where maybe we're creating a sinking fund. A sinking fund is any sort of an account where um, you're saving up for some future expense. And so if you live in a condo, you'll have that with your condo association. Sometimes they'll have a little contingency fund that they'll be setting up because they'll know that in a few years they'll need to repair the roof and that'll cost $30,000. So everyone will put aside a little bit now. This is the sort of thing that we might be interested in, might be finding out what would be the payment that we would need to make for some future value in our sinking fund. We might be interested in solving for R. So we know that the formula that we had for an annuity looked like this. So if I were interested in solving for R, I would bring the I up and bring this bracket down so that I would have after I've solved for R that R is equal to A times I over 1 plus I to the N minus 1. All right. So nothing really fancy here, just now we'll be solving for R rather than solving for our future value A. So you might want to know this. Let's say that you are planning to save for your future retirement. Let's say that you're thinking now that you're 30 years old and you want to wait to retire until you're 70 and you want to make sure that you have a million dollars in your account for when you retire. So the question is, how much do you need to deposit to make that happen? So you're interested in saving up in 40 years total $1 million. So we know what our future amount is. It's $1 million. And we know what T is. It's 40. And we're interested in finding out how much do I need to deposit each quarter. I need to know what is R. And of course, we're making quarterly payments and receiving interest compounded quarterly. So M is 4. And R, our stated interest rate, 2.25% or 0 0.0225. 
Okay, so how much do I need to deposit every quarter? So let's do this. We know that R is equal to AI over 1 plus I to the N minus 1. And now we'll put in everything that we have. We have 1 million times I, which is our stated rate, over number of times per year that we receive our interest. And in the denominator, 1 plus I to the power of N. N is M times T, 4 payments per year times 40 years, which is 160 payments in total. And I can find out that I would have my amount that I would need to deposit every quarter. So four times per year, I would need to deposit $3,870.21. If you're interested in, of course, how much are you going to have earned in interest by the end of it all, you can quickly calculate and find that your principal that you would have would be the $3,870.21 that you deposit times the 160 times you make those deposits. That's $619,233.60. So you've deposited just a little over $600,000 of your own money, and you have managed to earn an interest $1,000,000. Minus your principal. That tells me that my interest amount that I've earned should be $380,766.40. So I've paid just a little bit over $600,000 into that account. And I've actually earned an interest just a little bit shy of $400,000.